If you think performance will improve by holding people accountable for hitting targets, you're wrong. Performance measures and accountability have a very uncomfortable relationship. People just don't like to own measures or KPIs because of the fear of what they'll be held accountable for. But can performance ever be expected to improve if no one is accountable? Well, I guess it begs the question, why don't people want to be accountable for performance? Uh, traditionally, a measures owner is accountable for whether or not performance hits targets. Uh, for example, if the company profit doesn't meet a target, then the board would hold the CEO accountable. If the percentage of customer problems that are solved in the first call is too low, the customer service manager is held accountable. If the percentage of help desk calls that are answered within three rings is too low, the help desk operator is accountable. Now we know from experience the kind of behaviour this type of accountability drives, don't we? It's called gaming, where quick and easy actions are taken to show quick progress in the KPI. Like these, like the CEO will cut costs across the organisation, inspiring everyone to work smarter. The customer service manager will change the definition of solved to get a better first call resolution rate. Uh, and the help desk operator might rush through the call she's on to answer more calls within the three rings. And what happens in all cases is the measure might improve in the short term, but there are consequences such as long-term performance worsening and other measures being sabotaged. It's not hard to imagine how sabotage like, uh, like this can happen. Cutting costs means corners are cut and quality goes down along with customer satisfaction and brand loyalty. Changing that definition of solved means that problems um, come back into the pipeline again and cause even bigger bottlenecks. And rushing customers to end the call sooner makes them frustrated and dissatisfied, likely to tell their friends of the, the bad experience. When accountability is explicitly or implicitly defined as hitting targets, people feel threatened and judged. They know this is unfair and naturally need to defend themselves. They will do whatever it takes to hit the target as a higher priority over fundamental performance improvement. Accountability itself isn't the problem. The problem is what we hold people accountable for particularly when it comes to performance measures. Holding a person accountable for hitting a target assumes that they have full control over everything that's needed to hit that target. And that's true almost never. The ability for a target to be hit is the product of many things beyond a single person's actions. You know, things like the design of business processes and systems, uh, the requirement to comply with regulations or policies, the availability of um, or competition for limited resources like time and money and other people, the level of skill and knowledge that people have or, or are able to get access to, competitive, political and legislative forces in the organisation's business environment as well. Everyone has to work within the constraints of the business system and its environment. The father of quality, W. Edward Stemming, had much to say about this, pointing to the, the overwhelming observation that most of the constraints on performance are in the business's processes, not in the people. It's unfair to hold any individual person accountable for a performance result that is constrained by the business system. Accountability needs to be framed in a more constructive way. A constructive definition of accountability drives the right behaviour. The behaviour um, is right, I guess, when it results in a net positive change for the organisation as a whole. A net positive change is when targeted areas of performance improve with, with no unintended reduction in other areas of performance. A constructive definition of accountability 
I believe, has three parts to it. And the first part is monitoring the important results with meaningful performance measures. When someone's responsible for a specific business result like uh, problem resolution or accuracy of advice or eliminating rework, they can be accountable for routinely monitoring that result with a performance measure. And when that same someone is involved in designing that performance measure um, they're, that they're going to be accountable for, their ownership of it will make this part of accountability very easy. They will believe in the measure and why it matters. And this drives the behaviour of people focusing on the results that matter most. Now the second part uh, for defining accountability is interpreting the performance measures to identify performance gaps. When someone is responsible for monitoring a performance measure, they can be accountable for interpreting what that measure is telling them about the business result that it, that it monitors. And when they are also involved in setting improvement targets for that measure, the gaps between current performance and the target can be motivational for them. This drives behaviour of people seeking feedback about how the results are really honestly tracking. Now the third part of an accountability definition is initiating action if and when action is needed. When someone's responsible for interpreting a measure, they can be accountable for deciding what kind of actions needed, if, if at all. If they're also involved in analysing the causes of their measure's performance gap uh, and choosing the actions to fix those causes, their commitment to continuous improvement keeps getting stronger. This drives the behaviour of people to work on their processes and not just in them. If we want performance to truly improve overall and over the longer term, we need to very carefully define what KPI accountability means. Leaving it undefined or implicitly defined as hitting targets, it will drive behaviour to hit targets, not improve performance. Instead, if we define accountability as monitoring and interpreting and acting on what our KPIs or performance measures tell us, then it will drive the behaviour that we want and that is the behaviour of continuous performance improvement. So what does accountability for KPIs or performance measures actually mean in your organisation? How do people feel about it? What behaviours does it drive? And is it time for a new definition of accountability?